Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we are going to complete the engine build on our 8,000 RPM, 363 cubic inch small block Ford. In part one of this build, I assembled the entire short block, going through all the components that we're going to use to handle this much RPM, as well as the cam specs. So a quick recap. We're running a Dart SHP 8.2 deck block with a 4.125 bore. The crankshaft is a Smetting 3.4 stroke, fully forged, internally balanced. Rods are a 5.4 H-beam with ARP 2000 hardware. And the pistons are forged JE, about 10.35 to 1 compression. The camshaft is 252, 260, duration at 50 with about 700 thou of valve lift. It is a solid roller, but it's a very gentle solid roller that will perform great on the street and have really good valve train stability. Speaking of valve train, we are going to run a Jessel shaft mount aluminum sportsman series rocker system. All of the rocker arms will be tied to this one tool steel bar that goes across the entire head. And then each rocker pair is also supported by one tool steel shaft. And that shaft will bolt down just like this to the cylinder head. It's got three bolts that hold it. The advantage of this is that when one rocker arm has to open a valve spring, the pressure gets distributed into this shaft, giving it far greater stability and accuracy. The cylinder heads we're going to run are AFR's 220cc CNC ported heads with their dual solid roller spring kit and titanium retainers to try to keep the valve train as light as possible. We are going to run a custom Smith Brothers push rod. These are 3 8 diameter with a 145 wall thickness. And I think these are 6.9 inches. And then topping it off, we're going to run AFR's Renegade single plane intake manifold. During the mock-up phase of this build, I have already checked piston to valve clearance. We have miles of clearance, about 100 thou on the intake and 120 on the exhaust. So we're totally solid and we're ready to put these parts together. Now that our cylinder heads are installed, we can start setting up the shaft mount rocker system. The shaft mount bolts for the stand that go into the intake runner. I have Permatex PTFE thread sealant paste on the threads. And then the hardware that goes into the blind cylinder head, I always run CMD high torque um, ultra lube, thread lubricant. On the shaft mount bolts as well, I'm going to run the CMD thread lubricant. Now, since these rockers are on a shaft, it is vitally important that you torque these down with both lobes on the base circle. And what I mean by that is currently this lobe is on lift. It's opening the valve, and this one's on the base circle. So you can see on our pushrod ends, look how much taller this pushrod is. If I tried to torque these down right now, there's a 90% chance I'm going to crack this steel shaft because it's trying to open this valve while this one is relaxed. Whereas on this side, you can see both lifters are almost totally down and the shaft is already resting against our stand. This one I could torque down now and be safe. So I'm gonna be rotating the engine over onto the base circle with both lifters on the base circle, and then I will torque down the shaft.
in a hydraulic roller valve train application, the lifter has a hydraulic plunger that can raise and lower as the engine thermally expands and contracts. In a solid roller engine, the lifter is completely solid, so we have no hydraulic plunger. So the rocker arms actually have what's called lash, right? So next step is we're going to go through the full valve train and we're going to lash the rockers about where I think they're going to be while the motor's cold. Then when we get this engine on the dyno in part three of this series, we'll warm it all the way up, we'll pull the valve covers off, we'll recheck our lash when the motor is at operating temperature, and then we can make our first dyno hit. The reason you have to lash these at operating temperature is because whenever the motor is cold, it could be 90 degrees in the summer outside, or it could be 40 degrees in the winter outside, and that's going to change the lash of the motor. But when it's hot, it should always be in that 180 to 200 degree window, and that's kind of our constant. So this engine, the cam card, calls for 16 thousandths lash on the intake and 18 thousandths lash on the exhaust when it's hot. Generally, I'll subtract 10 thou off of that as my starting point when the motor's cold and on the engine stand. So right now, I'm going to lash it 6 on the intake and 8 on the exhaust. And that should get us really close, that when we do get it on the dyno, we can immediately fire it up, let everything break in and get nice and warm, and it's not going to hurt itself. So we're going to go through the valve train and do that process. To save me a little bit of time, I do all the intakes first with my 6 thou gauge, and then I come back and do all the exhausts with my 8 thou gauge. So we're going to rotate the motor until our intake lobe is on the base circle of the camshaft, which is when the exhaust lobe is opening. So now it's opening. My cam, my intake is on the base. Next, we'll insert my 6 thou gauge and we'll start to run down this adjuster nut right until I feel it start to touch my gauge. And then we can lock it just a little bit with that wrench. And you should have nice, even resistance, no extra slack, and not super tight that you have to force it out and force it in. So that one could be a little bit tighter. Could still be a little bit tighter. Too tight. And that's perfect. So I'm going to repeat that process for all eight intake valves. And then we'll come back and do all eight exhaust valves. All the intakes are complete. I'm now going to switch to my 8 thou and run the exhausts. This is probably the coolest part of any build running a really nice shaft rocker system. The motor just looks freaking epic. So all the valves are now ran cold before we start the engine on the dyno and recheck them hot. Next step, we're going to install the single plane intake manifold.
Okay, after about 20 torque cycles, the Ford intake is finally seated and crushed onto this engine. I'll entertain you, if you're an engine builder who does these Ford manifolds, run the OEM Ford pattern and then come back to that first bolt, it will loosen up every single time. And basically I have to run that pattern like 10 times to get all of them to cinch up. However, this motor is now finished up and we are ready to dyno. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so that you can watch next week's video, which will be part three of this build series, where we run this thing on the dyno and hear how it sounds churning 8,000 RPM. See you all then.